importantly, he knew what he was talking about. From the 305 to the 303, this is TCSP. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Bryan and the Cadbury Serious Band. Welcome to the Casually Serious Podcast. Today we focus on the best sitcoms of the 1990s. Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Welcome back to the Casually Serious Podcast. How's it going, Ken man? Oh man, see, I knew I thought this was gonna happen. Hold on one second. My headset is gonna go crazy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run this way. All right. Can you hear me? Are you there? I can't hear you for some reason. All right, well. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make it through the fog here, I guess. Hold on one second. I've got a little test. I'm gonna I'm gonna run to see if it's uh if it's my bad. Bear with us, ladies and gentlemen. I know you can hear me, but I can't hear anything. All right, Ken Man, you might want to unplug your mic and replug it back in. I can't hear you. There you, there you okay. go. I got there you. you. All, right. All right. I thought it was my headset. It's your fault, man. All my fault. Completely my side. Not to worry. We'll cut that out in post. Do we have post? <laughs> it's no, a good way to start, movie. though. We don't it's have a good post. way to start. We're doing 1990s, so it's perfect. This is like when the internet just started. So this is exactly the kind of stuff that would happen anyway. So. And it's funny that you say that. I was trying to find some themes and stuff to put together for what we're doing here today. And I was specifically looking for early uh, modem squelches and, uh, you know, DSL photos and stuff like that. <laughs> there isn't really a lot of it, which is pretty crazy, man. That's uh, a good sound. Able to find. Yeah, the squelch was something I was just going to add, but I just didn't think it was uh, worth making people go insane from that noise every time I threw a video up. So. I 86 that. But anyway, let's get back to intros, man. It is Tuesday, another casually serious podcast with one of my brothers, Ken Man. Ken Man, how the hell are you doing today, man? Now that you all can hear me, I'm doing great. Great. So happy to be with everybody tonight. Love talking about just silly stuff. And tonight's a good one because it's the 90s and 90s was a silly time. The nice was definitely a, it, it, it was all if you thought, you know, we look back on the 80s and think about the excess and the crazy colors and the neons. The 90s took that shit to like the 30th level. <laughs> it was just always like, you know, snap into a slim gym and everything was just eat me in your face. Like the whole thing was freaking insane, man. And uh, I, I was I was going through some videos and looking at commercials from the 90s and it was just unbearable. Like, you know. And, uh, you know, that kind of gets me to the, one of the points, the points, the fact that by the time 1990, 91, which is really when most of us graduated high school, we sort of our took age. off. Yeah, our age group, we sort of took off. And, you know, whether it was going to college, moving out, whatever it was that we were doing, we certainly were not sitting in front of the TV as much as we were in the 70s and 80s watching a lot yes. of uh, a lot of shows. Um, and the 90s had 9.7 million sitcoms out. Um you know, 4.7 were basically just all African American sort of taking up where, where the 70s left off and the 80s sort of diminished a little bit, which was a beautiful thing. Um, but we, I just didn't find myself sitting in front of a television as much. Now, when I did find myself sitting in front of a television, it had to be something that was unusual. Uh, it wasn't like any of the other sitcoms I had seen. In order for me to be interested in it, the only thing you could catch me was probably in between some weird smoking session where I was like, oh, check this out on Comedy Central or something weird like that. But 
we weren't sitting in front of the TV like like we uh, like we normally were for the other decades. So this was a little bit different, I think, to approach. What, what say you on that one? Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, for our age group, again, I, you can all figure out where we're at, but we definitely were not watching as much television. These were the years yeah. where we were we were spreading our wings a little bit and getting out there doing different stuff. So sit in front of a TV was not something that we were doing. All right. Yeah, and- <laughs> that, yeah no, no, sorry. You're good. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Um, cards. But- <laughs> So for, for me, watching TV, not such a big thing. But when I did, I was pretty picky about my time. So if I didn't like something like the first or second time watching it, I was done. I shut it out. People talk about, yeah, that show was pretty good. I'm like, eh, eh. I, I might have given up on stuff a little too early. Mm-hmm. But your time's a little more important than it was when, when you were a little younger and you were just plopped in front of the television all the time. So this is a... This will be a different uh, grouping here, I think, than what we've done before. 100%. 100%. And I want to go ahead and, before we get into the show, uh, mention something real quick. Our legal team uh, got into a buttload of hot water last week uh, simply because we decided to use a bunch of soundtracks from sitcoms that we didn't clear. Waddy freaking da. So I had to hear, uh, we had to hear our attorney's team on a Zoom meeting let us know that we were hit with about eight copyright infractions uh, that would demonetize our station, which we're not necessarily even qualified for yet. So it wasn't a huge thing. But uh, at any rate, uh, my legal team would like to uh, like me to get this across to all of you out there watching us by letting you know uh, we are unable to use the theme songs of any TV shows movies or likenesses without consent from that show's respective legal representative from here on out only unlicensed and non copywritten works or works cleared by our legal department will be used lest we risk demonetization so yeah uh, you said you know, lest i said lest yes i did what can i say man they're they're very wordy people i think you understand this man you know attorneys can be very wordy and they need to make sure that you know uh they don't really rock layman uh, but they did a little bit for that one so i just thought maybe i'd get it out to the friends and family that are watching yes we have to we're not going to be able to use a lot of stuff we might be able to get around it but irregardless um we've got 10 shows from the 90s five that i chose and five that ken men chose uh, and uh, I'm pretty happy with mine. Uh, and, and again, Ken and I just said, if it wasn't something that was uh, slightly unusual or something that was not like a lot of the shows that we watched the past two decades, we probably weren't watching it. So this is really what we were attracted to. Uh, and then we can definitely talk to you folks if, if we have a lot of time uh, about what you think some of the best ones uh, for the 90s are. So get those in the back of your head because there's a lot more than 10. There were, like I said, about 9.7 million. <laughs> uh so uh, I'm gonna get. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start it off. So let's get into my number five best 1990s era sitcom. Oh, so. Oh, sorry. Listen, man. If we're gonna have to use it. We might as well enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? Like that's, I, I'm just gonna just keep dancing to it until I really feel that synthetic crap that they're trying to shove down our ear holes. But anyway, uh, I digress, ladies and gentlemen. If you do not know what that show was, that was uh, Doctor Katz. Uh, and uh, again, I this was something that uh, it was. I believe this was a Comedy Central exclusive. It starred Jonathan Katz as Doctor Katz, John Benjamin as Ben. Uh, from Archer fame and also the can of vegetables from Wet Hot American Summer. Um, Sarah Silverman is the Laura, the receptionist. And, uh, and I forgot what it, the name of the uh, illustration was called. I think it was called, um, uh, I don't know, Scatter Vision or something like that, because the whole thing just kind of wiggled the whole time. And it was just the really, the really beautiful thing about it was listening to Dr. Katz talk to his son, Ben, who was always like, yeah, dad, I, 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 I wanted to go to an interview, but it, I didn't feel like doing it. And he would always get in these weird conversations with his son, trying to be cool and not be an asshole at the same time. Uh, and he was basically just sitting around the whole time. And again, they couldn't get too involved because it was 
art in the 90s, uh, which was pretty crude at that time, especially the kind of art that they used in that one. But for me, that show was all about the witty banter, the uh, the intelligent dialogue between the two, and the fact that it was pretty much being played a lot. Uh, I don't. I think it was Comedy Central that started it all off. So. Uh, yeah, Dr. Katz uh, is definitely one of my uh, all-time favorite uh, 1990s shows. What do you think about Dr. Katz? I don't even know if I know what this <laughs> show is. So uh, is this is this the one with like John Lovitz? Wasn't John Lovitz this character or no? It's, it's Am I mixing this up with some other show or something? Yes, you are mixing it up with another show that came much later called The Critic. Ah, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That was this is, uh, this is Dr. Katz, Sorry. a divorced father. I remember the custody. shady thing. Yeah. He's a divorced father that has custody of his 23-year-old slacker son, Ben, who dreams of wealth and freedom but is too lazy to find a real job. Dr. Katz's receptionist is the sarcastic Laura, played by uh, Sarah Silverman. He spends his free time in the bar with his friend Stan and Julie and the bartender. And that's really it. That's really All it. Right. That's pretty much that's pretty much that, what that show's about. And, um, you know, it, it, again, it was a, it was a, it was a weird one. A lot of people didn't know about it. But Dr. Katz, professional therapist, number five. That's mine. And I'm sticking to it, man. All right. All right. Dr. Katz. Dr. Katz. Uh, let's get into <laughs> your number five right now. Ken, man. Get ready to dance. Oh, so. Ah, yes. Murphy Brown. Murphy, Murphy Brown. Brown. This show this show is all about one one character, Candace Bergen, right? I'm pretty sure her name was. Yes, Sorry. you were correct. I didn't, I didn't study. I should have. Um, but what I loved about the show was Candace Bergen because <laughs> she, she was just so witty. She was absolutely hard-nosed. It was just a strong, strong personality. And I, I just... I fed off of this. I loved watching her. I loved watching her responses um, to what to her to her uh, man co-stars. Oh, man, tonight's going to be rough for me. I can already feel it. <laughs> the co- All right. <laughs> it's been it's been a good day. So anyway, <laughs> what I liked about the show was the interactions with Candace Bergen and the way that she handled herself. Witty responses, very strong, um, hard nosed type of uh, character. She was a journalist. She was a recovering alcoholic. So the show had a lot of meaning to it. It was 10 seasons run from 88. So I did jump a little into the 80s this, with this one to 98. Um, so any 10 year run series, you know that it's a, it's a good show. Took up 62 Emmy Awards with uh, 18 wins, Emmy nods with 18 wins, 15 Golden Globes. Um, so this show, the show definitely appealed to a lot of critics as well. And it also had a lot of um, animosity with some pop culture in the way that they handled things that they did on the show, whether they showed her as a single pregnant mother or they showed her as dealing with or using medicinal marijuana. Um, these were things that she did that got she got called out for. And most popularly, Dan Quayle calling her out directly in, uh, in one of his speeches when he was uh, running as vice president back in the day. Badass, um, badass. So, so, so this show really touched a lot of places uh, throughout pop culture, politically, and just with a show that would absolutely make you laugh because of her interactions. And I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't even know a lot of what the show was. I didn't even know that that's what she did. I was like, oh, cool. So she's an investigative journalist. I knew she was a recovering alcoholic, and I knew she talked crap to a lot of the people that she dealt with in the show, and that made me laugh. So for that reason, Murphy Brown is my number mm-hmm. five. You know, and I don't know that I saw one episode of Murphy Brown. <laughs> I, I, I think maybe, and again, I remember her. I remember her more so than anything from SNL. Her days on SNL, um, and she was uh, she was hilarious, and she was part of that women's women's movement. The the very first feminist uh, comedian, pretty much all of that. Um, she was part of all that. So her going into comedic acting was really something that was going to happen regardless. I think, but. Um, I don't remember watching that show one time. I think thinking to myself, maybe, uh, maybe it's a little too highbrow for me. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I didn't watch it a lot, but I am, I am well aware of it and, and how popular it is and, and where, you know, where it belongs in terms of, uh, pop culture and at least this list. So that's that. 
All right, well, here's my number four, and uh, you're almost guaranteed not to have seen this one either. Oh, so. Dream on. I'll get you lawyers. Yeah, it started off uh, with a little bit of piano, and it was it was actually from from when the days when HBO was actually still pretty cool. Uh, they were still playing a lot of cool stuff that was considered sort of edgy. Um, but regardless, for those of you who do not know what Dream On was, uh, it starred Brian Ben Ben as Martin Tupper, Wendy Malick as his ex wife Judith Tupper, Chris Dimitrol as Jeremy Tupper, their kid. Denny Dillon as Toby Peddleby, the uh, the wisecracking uh, um, uh, receptionist for Martin Tupper. Uh, Dorian Wilson as Eddie Charles, his uh, TV host buddy. And Michael McKeon from pretty much everything hilarious in the 70s uh, as Gibby Fisk, who is Martin's boss. Uh, and the show is centered on Martin Tupper uh, and his life in an apartment in New York City with his young son and relating to his ex-wife while trying to date other women and succeed as an editor for a small book publisher with Toby, his brassy secretary. Judith, his ex-wife, went on to marry Dr. Richard Stone, the never seen until the end of the series, most impossibly successful man on the planet. And despite Martin's undying love for Judith, he could never compete with the legendary Dr. Stone. Uh, the opening indicates Martin's mother parked him in front of the TV when he grew up and he got engrossed in it. It briefly shows a babysitter making out with a boyfriend behind young Martin, hence the association of sex with his memories. The show was notable for its frequent use of clips from old movies and TV shows to express Martin's inner life and feelings, which lent it much of its quirky appeal, reminding viewers of the impact of television on their consciousness. It was also significant for being one of the first American sitcoms to use uncensored profanity and nudity, which is another reason why it appealed to me. You know, uh, as it said, I, I forgot that it actually was, you know, because we've seen something, so many shows that are just like that all the time now. But back then, it was definitely a lot of nudity and there was smoking weed and they were talking, uh, they were saying things they didn't normally say. But I love how throughout the entire show, an episode, uh, if something happened to him, he would flash to a TV show he saw as a kid and it would actually show it, uh, you know, and it would it would usually be hilariously connected to what he was feeling at the moment and it was extremely witty so uh uh dream on is one of my favorites uh all-time favorites number four and i have them all on dvd as a matter of fact never heard of this one either um not at all and when he describes it i'm like okay this sounds familiar this is probably something i saw parts of at some point or another but no, got nothing I can say to this one at all. Sorry. It's, it's tough, man. It's tough, like I said, man. These, <laughs> these are shows where... It, it, we, we weren't watching TV, man. We were doing other things in the 90s. Why did we do this? <laughs> if it was quirky, then I was watching it. If it was straightforward bullshit, I was done by that point at that time. I had no room for that, man. The problem is there was other shows. There were dramas and other crap that had started to got popular at the evening slots that weren't sitcoms anymore. And they were, you know... And that kind of took a lot of viewership away and, and the need for people to want to write better sitcoms because they right. obviously couldn't, you know? Yeah, the dramas yeah. were becoming good. It was also a very experimental time for uh, uh, MTV with liquid television, a lot of really right. brain heady, red and stimpy, drug addled yeah. sort of insane shit was coming out during that time. So yeah, Red and Stimpy, man. So put this on our list, man. I like Red and Stimpy. Yeah, but, man. I mean, hey, what's up, Josh? Thanks for tuning in, man. Thanks yeah, for hanging you know, out with us last week too, brother. I tell you, man, that's uh, that that's what makes it tough, I think, with the with the sitcoms in the in the nineties. But but there's some good ones coming, so let's keep going. There are, yeah, let's keep rolling, man. With your, uh, this is your number four, correct? I don't know. Let's see. Tire friends. Oh, so. Come on, guys, start dancing. I think we couldn't do anything Fringe. better than that. <laughs> Just don't My worry bad. about it. I'm okay with it. It's, a, okay. it's like the okay. video game when you keep dying, you come back and you have to listen to the same right. beginning part over and over again. That's, You're what right. like. That's what's happening here. I just, we keep dying. 
Okay. All right, anyway, Frazier. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful, man. I'm sorry I ruined that for you. All right. Oh, good shit. Go ahead. Frazier, 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 93 to 04, long run. I mean, honestly, how long can this dude play Frazier Crane? I mean, he's been doing it with Cheers. His show spun off directly from Cheers, just kind of picked up at the same spot. Uh, Frazier Crane, a psychiatrist from psychologist, I don't know, one of them, from Seattle, was at Cheers in Boston, married to Lilith. They got divorced. All that stuff happened um, on Cheers. And so this picks up now. He goes back to Seattle. His father comes to live with him so he can take care of him. His brother lives nearby. He's also a psychologist, iatrist. I don't know. And it's a funny show because it's just, it uses great intellect. The father is a ex-cop, so he's kind of your blue-collar guy, and he's just, you know, he kind of likes to live a chill, blue-collar lifestyle, but he's living with his sons that are wealthy and, you know, living the high life, but he kind of maintains his blue-collar style and, and just... He's just hilarious. And to me, that's the funniest part of the show is their dad. Um, but the rest of it adds to a, to a lot of humor in just the way that they kind of handle themselves in the show. And the dialogue between him and his brother, Niles, is absolutely hilarious as well. The show is great. I mean, all the way down to the dog. The dog's hilarious even. I mean, it's just a, it's just a good show when the dog can be cool and a part of the show as well. And to run... Uh, 11 seasons, uh, you know, tons of awards, 37 wins. I'm one of the biggest that of, of any show, any time. And again, this guy he plays the same guy for so many years. It's 20 something years that he plays the same character. It's pretty incredible, man. So Frazier absolutely makes my top five. Yeah. I'm not going to disagree with you on this. I've seen a lot of episodes, um, it was very witty. It was very smart. I remember it being one of those one of the first shows I started watching that was smart. So for whatever reason, I didn't necessarily watch Murphy Brown because I thought maybe it was a little too brainy. But then this came along and it was just sort of the, the whole Frasier and Niles uh, uh, contrast was great. Daphne was gorgeous. Um, mm -hmm. Like it, it was it was like you said, the dog, obviously. And then the father from um, Say Anything. Right. So it was is is uh, is in this one. And again, it, it was it was written very well. It was funny. I enjoyed it, man. So I'm glad I made your list, man, because it was one of those that I kind of was going back and forth on. Um, and it made the list of shows that was apparently for me witty enough for me to spend my time watching in the 90s. Yeah, well, this is also a show that ran continues run in syndication all the time. And when my wife was pregnant, she watched this show like constantly, nonstop. This show was on all the time. It just got through it. She got her through it, I think. <laughs> she watched every season in, in row, beginning to end. So I saw a lot of Frasier just for that reason as well, again. And we got Brian Smith on uh, uh, in the uh, up, gallery Brian? saying mm, that it, it brought popularity to the Jack Russell Terrier breed, which, you know what, I'm thinking mm -hmm. maybe you're probably right on that, dude. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that there was one uh, before that, and I remember a lot of people saying, holy shit, why did I buy this dog? Uh, when you realize that they don't really turn off ever, they, yes. they just they just sort of stand up and sleep a little bit, dude, and then they're That's on again. Terrier, for like, man. That's what terriers yeah. do, like all of them. Yeah, man, no doubt. Brandon, thanks so much, man. Thanks for thanks for uh, thanks for coming in. I appreciate we thanks, appreciate man. the love, man. Brian, Brandon, everybody, cool, love it. All right, man, that was Fraser. Let's uh let's go ahead and check out what uh I thought my number three was, man. Oh, so. Man, oh man. Uh, again, if we're going to talk about a show that I watched the hell out of, uh, this is it. Uh, I'll bring up the picture of the cast real quick. Phil Hartman as Bill McNeil, the news co-anchor. Dave Foley from Kids in the Hall as Dave Nelson from news, the, basically the news director is what he was. Stephen Root. Uh, from King of the Hill and a million other things uh, as Jimmy James, the station owner, Maura Tierney as Lisa Miller, the reporter and the ex-girlfriend of Dave, Joe Rogan as Joe Gorelli, who was basically a handyman around the, uh, the, uh, uh, the network, Andy Dick as Matthew Brock, a news reporter, Candy Alexander as Catherine Duke, an anchor, Vicki Lewis as uh, Dave's secretary, and John Lovitz came in at the end of this 
uh, to fill in for Phil Hartman after Phil Hartman passed away. Um, so he was part of this um, for a little bit, uh, which was obviously just one season. And um, uh, but at any rate, the series is uh, set at WNYX, a fictional AM broadcasting all news radio station in New York City, populated by an eccentric station owner and staff. The show begins with the arrival of a new news director, the everyman, Dave Nelson, Dave Foley. While Dave turns out to be more experienced than his youthful appearance guests, he never fully gains control of his coworkers. And uh, that's pretty much the lineup right there. But but really what it was, it was the it was the way Andy Dick was just Andy Dick the entire time. Um, and Phil Hartman was his usual Phil Hartman self, you know, like he just never got it. It was just like you never, you always knew what you were going to get with Phil Hartman, and and Joe Rogan was actually hilarious in this show, dude, because they had so many characters on it that it ga- it gave you the ability to kind of hone in on whichever one you want. Uh, I always thought Candy Alexander was gorgeous too, um, and yeah, it, and more tyranny. They all did really well, and I think maybe I would definitely say the fact that I gave it a chance was because Phil Hartman and Dave Foley were in it. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, by far the two the two main reasons why I have massive respect for those two guys what they've done for comedy. Yeah, absolutely agree. Phil Hartman's the reason why I watched the show, and I was not a religious watcher of this show. I watched it when it was on, and I could, and I loved it. I, it was a great show, but it wasn't something that I was on top of and can say I saw a number of episodes. And I think to my fault, I missed out. That's that's a great, great show. And someday I'll go back and watch episodes that I've never seen before. Because uh, there's, there is a lot of comedy in those shows. Well, uh, I believe my wife's favorite episode and one of my favorite episodes, if you want to look one up, is go look up the one where uh, Dave bans cigarette smoking in the network <laughs> and uh, the battle that ensues between him and uh, Bill McNeil, Phil Hartman, is freaking hilarious, uh, as well as everyone else. So you need to check that out if you have not seen that one. I will. I will. That's it's on the list. Yeah, buddy. All right. So we're narrowing it down here. We're getting down to the uh, to the other end. Let's, uh, do it. let's get it done here, man. What do we have here. Yeah. So Josh Williams is here hanging out again. It was awesome to be able to hang out with you last week, brother. Thanks so much for chilling out. Um, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Brian Smith, Brandon Reddick, as usual, dude. We got some we got some usual suspects coming and hanging out. So let's get into your number three. Let's do it. Time friends. Oh so. The Casually Serious Podcast. We're doing 90s shows. Hell yeah. We should just sing these ourselves. Um, Fresh Friends. All right, come on. I mean, Will Smith's got a show. So Will Smith raised in Philly, not such a great part of town. He's playing basketball. Basketball bounces over, smacks into a bunch of gang members' cars. There's a little incident there that freaks out his mom. And his mom sends him to live with his rich family in Bel Air. That's it, man. That's the show. And it's great from there because you've got Will Smith, who's coming from this kind of tough part of town and he's grazed a certain way, hasn't seen certain things. And all of a sudden, boom, he's living in Bel Air with the wealthy, his cousins, his uncle, everybody's living the high life. And he's kind of just living his still, but within this capsule. And it just it allows for a lot of humor to ensue because you can kind of go to a lot of different storylines with this and they did and it was done very well and the original plan of the show was that it was going to be a wealthy white family um that it's that they become friends he you know he becomes friends with them at school and then the family yeah. adopts them but you know there, there was a lot of that stuff going on so the writers at the last minute said let's make it a wealthy black family because then you could have that dynamic as well which is true because you just that wasn't seen as much, and then this kind of dynamic with enough with a with someone coming in that was from lower income just made for a pretty cool, um, pretty cool show. I mean, I, I got to say it was a show I watched a lot, and I laughed always, and I loved Will Smith. I mean, Will Smith's a fantastic actor. I mean, I've always a- appreciated Will Smith for what he's done, and I love his music, man. Summertime's great, one of the best jams ever. So for sure, Fresh Prince is in what I made top three even. Number three is that what we're on? Three. Good job. We are. 
Yeah, I've got a, I've got a, I've, I've got a little bit of quick trivia for you, real quick, and a question to ask you. Do it. Uh, did you know who was offered the uh, song "Summertime" before the French Prince? The Fresh Prince was. Ooh, I don't know the answer to that, so I won't even it was, try. It was offered to Rakim. Really? Yeah. If you listen to the way, if you listen to the way Fresh Prince delivers that particular song, it's uh-huh. a little bit more laid back, and it, it and if you start thinking about how Rakim would have done the same exact yeah. thing. You'll kind of see how it yeah. how it uh, how it goes in there, man. Which is That's kind of crazy. That yeah, is interesting trivia. I like that. I like that. Good job. I love this show too, man. Fresh Prince is part of the American fabric. Um, right. It is it is up there with the Cosby Show as yeah. part of uh, uh, not only you know obviously an important black show, but just straight up an important show. Uh, obviously, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna highlight a lot of black issues that maybe some uh, people that didn't necessarily know about. Would be able to focus on and say, "Holy shit!" You know, you know, I'll think about this and that. It was a tear jerking show, man. It made you think. It made you cry. It made you do a lot of things, man. It was emotional, and uh, that's the way I like my music. So that's exactly the way I like my TV shows, and it's something I'm going to invest in if I can't, if I can't invest in the characters. And Alfonso Rivera was, you know, part of my childhood, and I was a huge, like we know from the '70s, a huge uh, or '80s, a huge Silver Spoons fan, and he was on the last two or three seasons of Silver Spoons, uh, besides Jason Bateman. So you know, uh, him him uh, him him being part of that show as Carlton is another one of those groundbreaking roles too. The sort of intelligent, business-minded black nerd w- was not something that was really trailblazed until him and even Urkel, um, right? Jaleel White, you know, which is it, it's it's pretty crazy, man. Like, there's a lot of groundbreaking stuff going on in this era. And at the same time, um, all of pop culture knew it because celebrities knew it. I mean, look at some of this list here. Bo Jackson, Heavy D. These are celebrity guest stars. Quincy Jones, I'll Be Sure, Isaiah Thomas, Evander Holyfield. I mean, it goes Vivica Fox. There's Oprah Winfrey, Vanessa Williams. There's incre- These are all guest stars. This is insane. Ken Griffey Jr., Jay Leno, Chris Rock. Unbelievable. I mean, it's just the show appealed to so many and so many people wanted to be a part of what they were doing because that this show was incredible what it did and this and the momentum that it, it kind of kept going throughout uh the, the six seasons that it ran yeah it did a lot of good it did a lot of good stuff it brought the reason why so many black actors and actors in general and in the entertainment business hip-hop stuff like that the reason why they gravitated towards that uh, that show is because it was it started become becoming a very very big uh, show and it was getting a lot of attention for a lot of the emotion and real shit they were putting in their shows, man. So you're right, it was, it was, it was a massive, uh, it was a massive show for a long time. Brandy Campbell, what is going on? Thank you so much for hanging out. Alfonso does not get enough credit. Uh, and again, I did have his VHS uh, tape on how to break dance when I was a young man. <laughs> I sent him money, so. Yeah, that's a great show. That belongs on everybody's '90s list. And, it, and it, did it go into the 2000s or did it end in the '90s? I'm not sure. '96. It ran six seasons. Oh wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I don't have that information for my sitcoms. If you want to look at uh, Google them, uh, I'll go ahead and put the list up again, or or maybe not. I don't know. But let's check out my number. Two, what this is three, right? Uh, two now, right? Are two. We gonna... yeah, man. Right, Come on, two, man. I believe. Sorry. Hey, come on. Can I, you know, get a cue card here? Fuck. All right. My number two. Oh, so. Good Lord in heaven, man. Let me tell you, dude. There's not a lot of shows that I've seen episodes of dozens and dozens of times uh other than it's always sunny in philadelphia and some of the ones that i love more than any of them this one is one of them man third rock from the sun was absolutely amazing it was acted incredibly well written incredibly intelligently well um let's start from the top it started starred john lithgow if you ever heard of that guy as mm-hmm. dick solomon uh Kristen johnston as the nine foot eight sally solomon uh french stewart as the squinty harry solomon uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt as Tommy Solomon, and Jane Curtin. I don't know if you ever heard of her. She's some lady from some show called SNL back in the day. Uh, she was Mary Albright. Um, Simbi Kali as Nina Campbell, which is later on. Uh, Elmarie Wendell as Mamie Dubchek. I don't know if you've ever seen the show, but man, Miss Dubchek, oh my God. And uh, Wayne Knight, uh, who was also known as Newman, 
who played Officer Don Orville. Uh, the premise of the show revolves around um, an extraterrestrial research expedition hailing from a planet in a bar barred spiral galaxy on the Cephas Draco border, attempting to live as a normal human family in the fictional city of Rutherford, Ohio, said to be 52 miles outside of Cleveland, where they live in an attic apartment. The show's humor is principally derived from the aliens' attempts to study human society and understand the human condition while living as humans on Earth, reflecting on human life from perspective of aliens. Most of the episodes are named after the protagonist, Dick. In later episodes, they become more accustomed to Earth and are often more interested in their human lives than their mission. I've got a lot of other stuff here, but I'm not going to get into it. Um, it goes on pretty deep into into uh, the big giant head and the quivering purple tube and a lot of the crazy references to the alien life forms that they are uh, representing as uh, humans on Earth. But one of the most hilarious parts of all of it was the fact that Kristen Johnston was actually a man, but trapped in this incredibly beautiful, tall woman's body. And she was incredibly bullish most of the time. And everyone had to correct her on how to be a female. And she was just always, screw this, and just pushing shit. And it was just amazing to see her. And then French Stewart, that squinty sort of just, you know, the intelligent guy. It, it, it was, I don't know, man. I could not get enough of it. Uh, it was extremely sad when it when it stopped, um, as most great shows are. But uh, Third Third Rock from the Sun is one of the greatest shows in my mind, man. I, I, I'll never forget that show. Yeah, this was a show that I did not watch religiously, but also always enjoyed when I did watch it. Uh, Lithgow was one of my favorite actors, so it definitely was worth watching for him alone and Jane Curtin. Um, and honestly, I didn't even know that that was a man trapped in her. She was beautiful. Kind of wondered why she acted so odd, so that makes sense. Um, so yeah, it shows you how little I know about the show, but it was always funny, always laughed when I watched it. I kind of understood it. You, what you just explained now gave me more insight to the show than I've ever known. So thank you for that. Um, but yeah. the episodes I've seen, absolutely hilarious. The um, John Lithgow is the high commander, but I believe the big giant head is their, um, the usually unseen big giant head uh, appears in the body of William Shatner whenever he did uh, show up on this show. Awesome. So. It was just massively epic. You know what I'm saying? Like it pulled these yeah. stars into it and it was it was done intelligently. I believe uh, Jay, I believe um, the uh, the character of, um, uh, of Mary Albright, I believe she was a scientist or at least a, an educator of some kind. I'm not sure, but it was just written so well. Uh, and, you know, so that's that's definitely it needed to be on my list. And if you guys have ever seen, uh, never seen it, go check out some Third Rock from the Sun. It's bound to be on one of the 72 uh, streaming services that are going on right now. But, um, yeah, there was definitely just something about seeing uh, that tall Kristen Johnson acting like a tomboy. And, yeah, she was, yeah, she was, she was beautiful. They were all comedic gold, man. Joseph Gordon-Levitt went on to do great things as well. So uh, it, it, it made some careers. I didn't really see anything from French Stewart after that, but... Uh, that's the way Hollywood can be, man. It's a, it's a, it's a crazy place. Yes, yes, it is. All right, man. So let's go ahead and check out your uh, number two. Boom! Time for friends. Oh, so. I'll be there for you. Something like that. So, friends, I mean, <laughs> I mean, friends, the Rembrandts. Yes. Huh? Huh? Are we going to get in trouble? The Rembrandts? Because we're singing? No. Sorry. We don't have, no, no. We were we're off it wouldn't even hit an algorithm with it. Don't even worry. About it. <laughs> All right. So, these guys, right? Um, this is just, it was just a good show. And I guess it also was going to be a lot to do with age and the time that you were kind of watching this show, if it worked for you. I mean, this was a group of 20 to 30 year olds uh, that were living in Manhattan. It, the whole premise is that Rachel Green, wealthy, uh, ran, a girl ran away from her wedding day to go live with her old college roommate, uh, Rachel Geller, 
and uh, her ex roommate Phoebe, who's this masseuse, and she's a little crazy. And you know, the people across the street you got Joey and Chandler, and they're just everyone's got a thing, you know, and and they all just kind of it's great because you got all these characters, so you've got a, a ton of different plots. And every show, you could just do something different, and this one's got this kind of problem, and this one's dating this one, and you bring Burt Reynolds in, and you just do all kinds of crazy shit, because that's what they do on the show. And as more and more people watched the show, and it became incredible, won all types of awards, and it was constantly in the top five or ten, blah, 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 um, you know, the show just once again, that kind of popularity could really do no wrong. It got to where it was, you know, it's a stylish thing. You know, whatever haircut Rachel had, it was like all the chicks wanted that haircut. And, you know, everybody wanted to be, you know, as laid back as Joey and as, you know, quick-witted as, you know, really any of the, I don't know, I guess there was no quick-witted person on I, the show. I think Chandler was a little yeah, bit more I guess quick-witted. Would be the quick-witted. If I'm being guy. honest, dude. Right. No, you're right. Yes. I think Phoebe was faster than all of them, I if I'm being Phoebe. honest. Oh, my God. That was my favorite yeah. character on the show, absolutely. Me too. I absolutely Me too. The song she came up with, the stuff that, I still sing some of that stuff today. I mean, I really do. It's just, it's, she's absolutely one of my favorite characters. I don't think I missed an episode. I don't know if I watched it as they came out right on time or whatever, because it was in syndication a bunch too, but I definitely have never, I don't think I've missed an episode of, of this show. Um, I liked it. I really did. And it was uh, it, it was good for me at that time. It kind of fed into stuff that, that I was interested in. So um, I guess towards the end, it got a little ridiculous. It ran from 94 to 2004. So it was probably kind of once it hit 2000 already probably getting a little stale into the end of, uh, of its life. But, uh, but overall the show obviously had staying power. They still show it in syndication. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a good show and it's talked about doing new shows and everything and uh, bringing these, this group back. It's been talked about forever. So who knows what they're going to do in the future. But for me, this was a good show at the right time for my age, at least. And that's why it's number two. Uh, I wanted to hate this show when it was on. I really did. I, I, I wanted to hate it, I think, because of the people around me that liked it, if I'm being honest. Not you, just uh, just other people. Uh, but at any rate, I succumbed to the massively intelligent writing, the great acting from all of them. Again, I think Phoebe is the best out of all of them. Uh, it's just a personal thing, but I've seen all of them as well. Uh, I have a special connection, and uh, my, me, my wife and I have a special connection with this show because the... Um, well, not the imaginary, but the unseen people that they see across the sh the, the way from yeah. the apartment are called yeah. Bob and Jade, and uh, uh, and Jade is my wife's nickname. I've been calling her that since we've met uh, when I was thirteen. But uh, yeah, that's something that kind of always tied us into that show as well, too. But she that's watches it still all the time. Oh, there, here we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> up there, I did not oh, see it. Thank, thank you. Thank that's you, not naked, that's not the naked guy though, right? Because they got a naked guy. It is not the naked guy. No, 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 okay, no, no. okay. Because they, they were talking about that naked guy they were talking about. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that was the next. Maybe they were next door from Baba Jim. What's going on, uh, Baba Jim? Yeah. Talk about Baba Jim. Oh, totally but naked yeah. guy. Yeah, I I love this show too. When it's on, I'll wind up watching it because my wife's watching it too. I don't know if I seek it, but when I do watch it, I'm like, right. fuck, this shit is written so well, dude. And everyone just. The way that they play off of each other, the, the way it's written for them to play off each other is massive. And no one is bad in this cast, dude. Like, no, you know, he, as, as, as annoying as Ross is, he it's just a, a testament to how well it, he is portrayed uh, in, in that role is what's right. so amazing about it. They all acted massively well. So They did. They definitely did. Well, it's again, that's another one that's sort of embedded in the culture uh, of American, the American fabric. And that's another beautiful one. Uh, these are our these are our number one coming up right now. Our number one all time 90s sitcoms. And uh, here's mine right now. And uh, I'm sure it's a lot of people's, but uh, it's close to my heart and my back. Oh, so. Just a little bit of sh a little show you might have heard of uh, from a comedian you might have heard of uh, Jerry Seinfeld as Jerry Seinfeld, Julia, Julia Louis Dreyfus as Elaine Bennis, Jason Alexander as uh, George Costanza, Michael Richards as uh, Cosmo Kramer. We have Jerry Stiller, the great Jerry Stiller, as Frank Costanza, Estelle Harris as Estelle Costanza, Barney Martin as Morty Seinfeld, 
Liz Sheridan as Helen Seinfeld, <laughs> Wayne Knight as Newman, Larry David as George Steinbrenner, and the great Patrick Warburton as David Putty. And I really don't need to explain this TV show. It's a show about nothing. And it ran uh, as long as it should have. It ended however the hell it wanted to. And whether you liked it or not, it didn't really matter. Uh, it is by far the greatest 1990s or really one of the greatest all-time sitcoms ever. I cannot say enough about the characters. Costanza is basically loosely um, uh, loosely based off of Larry David. Uh, so anybody who watches it, you can see the, uh, uh, the, the automatic uh, similarities between Larry David on Curb Your Enthusiasm and George Costanza. They both think the same way. They both fucking act the same way. They have the same phobias and bullshit and, and stuff that they are not supposed to say that they always say. Um, and uh, it was just an amazing show, man. Uh, Kramer, obviously, uh, who went on to, to say some pretty un, uncool things, but uh, in that show was doing some comedic hilarity uh, and groundbreaking stuff as well. Uh, all, 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 the, all the women that Costanza dated and, 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 and Jerry dated, all the weird stories entangled in that. And obviously the Elaine Putty thing, which was just like, don't even know why it was happening, but it was just like, he just was so good with that deadpan, like, yeah, we're going to break up. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> we're good. Like, and it was just this fucking beautiful, man. I could not say enough about Putty. So Seinfeld, amazing. I will watch every episode whenever it's on. It's the it's the greatest sitcom of all time, maybe, but the greatest 90s uh, sitcom for sure. So, so David Putty, also a big New Jersey Devils hockey fan. And the episode where he dressed up in the full face paint as a New Jersey devil and went through New York City and scared the living daylights out of people thinking that he was a true devil going to the game was absolutely hilarious. This show, great show. He, he, probably one of the best shows ever. And, I mean, come on. There's humor everywhere. Brian Smith just said it. The Soup Nazi. I mean, it made me go to New York City and seek out the Soup Nazi that this show was written on. I actually got yeah. to go and, and, and eat food from this place. And it, it was hilarious. I mean, the, That's awesome, the man. show about nothing was still a show about something. It, it was crazy because it did always have something to talk about. There was something to it, but it was just generally so innocuous, or just so just generic that it generally wouldn't become a show. This You're always going to talk about something that's going to either give you like a good feel good thing at the end, or you're going to learn something or whatever. This show didn't do that. This show just took something as simple as a salad. And then the entire episode is going to be about a freaking salad. And, a and, big but, salad. Okay. But, a big know, salad. Hey, but it depends where you get it from. It depends which diet you're going, you know? I mean, this, this is the kind of stuff that this show did. And people that know the show are going to just laugh when you say that because they're going to remember yeah. that episode immediately. And it truly wasn't about much at all. One of, the, yeah. one of my favorites was just when they would sit, because they always sat at the diner at the table across from each other. And when they had yeah. a, when there were no seats, someone was in their seats for like the first time ever, and they had to sit at the bar long ways and looking back. And how do you sit like that? How do you talk to each other at a bar? You know, I mean, there's just little things. And then an entire episode would go about that. And this was what made this show so great. And and Larry David as George Steinbrenner, as you mentioned in the, I mean, that this was maybe, you know, a dozen episodes that he was even in ever, but they were great. And you only saw the back of his head and he would just talk ridiculousness because that's what they always said about the great late George Steinbrenner, uh, owner of the New York Yankees. So that's how that kind of tied in uh, to the show being obviously in New York and just uh, everything that happened there. Uh, it's just it, it's landmark in New York when it happens there. So it, it's uh, it's just a great show, absolutely great show, and great, great, great cast. Heartbreaker, brew breaker, run the prison <laughs> like a man. That's being hilarious, yeah. man. Yeah, that was a hilarious. beautiful show, man. And again, right. this, this iconic background, obviously, is yep. uh, yeah, is yeah, you know apartment. Right Yep. All this, all this cereal right up here, and it's I understand, uh -huh. com uh -huh. completely yeah. understand his obsession with cereal, man. I'm right yeah. there with him, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, one of the greatest. It, my my favorite, uh, obviously. So you've got a favorite. You've got a number one, and I do. Uh, this, is, I do. this is definitely a number one in everyone's heart as well. So I, let's I check out so. I so. what Ken Man's number one is. Oh, so. We 
you don't have to hear that song anymore. That's the last time we're going to play it. All right. Yeah. Hey, The Simpsons, come on. It's still on. I mean, I didn't even know. Where do you put this? It started in December of 89, so this couldn't be any more 90s, I don't think. Um, of course, they started in 87 on the Tracy Ullman show, but this spun into an actual show um, on Fox starting in December of 1989, and it still runs today. Today, 34 Emmy Awards, wins, sorry, um, 700, over 700 episodes. They had their 700th episode in, I think, October of 2020, So, and they signed on for two more seasons now. It just keeps going. I don't need to explain what the show is because everybody knows what the show is and being an animated show and having the family that they have really allows this show just to keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going and that's what's so great about it it's a, the kids don't need to get older you know, grandpa doesn't need to die for some reason the cats die and they get like i think they're like snowball five <laughs> or something but but nobody else dies and nobody else ages but the animals do there for some reason but all the other characters in the show, everybody else that they bring into the show, whether they're, you know, already people that are living in Springfield or if they're just, you know, real celebrities that come on. The list of celebrities that have been on the show is just ridiculous. So obviously The Simpsons plays into pop culture. It's been said that they've, you know, uh, uh, been pro pro procrastinated pro caught the word where you think about something before it happens. So. Damn, I thought about it. I keep thinking procrastinate, but that's the wrong program. I think you're going with prognosticator. Yeah, man, that's a tough word to say, but that prognosticating, that stuff was supposed to have happened. The whole Trump yeah. thing coming down, the that was in 2016 a, a years before. I mean, crazy, crazy stuff that they do. But that aside, the show is written very well. Um, you know, being able to just have the vocal actors they do, and, and it sounds ridiculous, but what they do is very important, and because that's what you remember. The visual is there, but it's the voice that you know, and it's the voice that you remember. Um, and everything down to the theme song from the show is just absolutely iconic, and it's going to continue to be, and that's what's so great about it, whether it's something that, oh yeah, I used to watch it in the 90s, or I started watching it again, or I haven't watched it in a while, or you just see it when it's on in syndication everywhere all the time, it doesn't matter. They're great episodes, and you can watch them anytime. They don't really go together at all, so you can watch The Simpsons whenever you want, or not at all. It's a great, great show, and it's something that I feel it really has no end in sight <laughs> until they absolutely say that's enough. <laughs> Fox or somebody else, like, we're done. We don't want any more, but... For the, why not? I mean, 89, we're going into two, or 2021, and they just signed to 2024. That's ridiculous. 35 years, they're going to have a 1,000 episodes. It's going to be the first show to ever do anything even close to that. Best show ever. Now, Seinfeld's still number one overall, but this is a really good show. Yeah, it's, it, I understand the respect of it, why it gets respect. It was extremely intelligent. I didn't watch a lot of them. Uh, I, I probably have a lot, enough of them memorized in the early years because I saw them more back then, but I didn't continuously watch them. Uh, there was obviously a lot of stuff going on. So, you know, depending on where you were, what you were focusing on, that's what was awesome about this particular era and decade was that there was a lot of shit for everybody. Uh, and, and I was not against animated shows at all. It was just this one didn't catch on with me very much. Although I think there is a select group of people who did get a really badass drawing of Bart Simpson holding a bag of weed in one of our high school yearbooks. I think I did it for about four or five people. Uh, other than that, man, Bart Simpson and all that, I think maybe it was uh, just something I just didn't really gravitate toward. But I do understand how they did basically uh, play Nostradamus with a lot of crazy shit in pop culture, man. So... Uh, that's definitely the truth. Pro they prognosticated a lot of craziness, but those are our top five, man. Um, we got through with it for with a few minutes to spare. So what I wanted to do was at least mention one wild card uh, that uh, I was okay. going to have on the list that did not make it on the list uh, for Me whatever too. reason. It kind of got squeezed out. Yeah, you got one as well. Um, oh, I have my own. Oh, I thought we were we were doing the same one. I got gotcha. you. Oh no, no, you've yeah. I, so I said, make sure you you name one for me. And uh, name one for you, and I have one for me. Sneaky, but sneaky, cool. Now I'm interested. I don't know what yours is. This is great. This show was I. Well, you, this show was aired in uh, in uh, Britain. It was an English show. It wasn't here in America, but it was shown over here in BBC and all this other stuff. So, and and this was the show I'm talking about. And uh, we did talk about this. 
Yeah, we did talk about it. <laughs> Believe it or not, man, uh, I love this show. We have Jennifer Saunders as Eddie Monsoon, Joanna Lumley as Patsy Stone, uh, Julia Sawala as Safi. Um, and it was just, to me, uh, the, the humor was right. It was dry. Uh, they picked on uh, Safi a lot, which was hilarious. Even her own mother picked on her. Uh, they were always drunk and high. They never did anything right. They were a fucking wreck if I'm being honest. And uh, I loved it, man. So that's my honorable mention. Um, you didn't watch it, did you? Did you see, have you seen any of them? Never, not one. Seems like a train wreck of a show though, which is what a lot of people like to watch sometimes. So that works, man. A lot better than watching just boring stuff. I mean, I don't know. Never heard of it. Actually, it I went on for years and years it. and years, man. They went they, I think recently they did a Christmas story and, a, and like maybe a movie like, yeah, dude, they, they were huge. It was a massive show. In the gay community, too, I think they have a massive gay following, too, for some reason. I don't know. I just think it's crazy that I think people who like chaos like watching that show. Um, but you have one as well. And I this do. Is your, it's you, not this absolutely is your, fabulous, though. It is not absolutely fabulous, but it was absolutely fabulous. And uh, it's Just Shoot Me, man. Go ahead and tell us why you love Just Shoot Me. I mean, this is also just a good group put together in, the, in a setting that fit a great show for comedy. David Spade kind of just set this up. Um, and I feel that his acting in this show made me kind of change my mind about this guy who I thought was just kind of like this uh, D-list actor. Uh, I was very impressed with his acting in this show. And I was even more impressed with his comedic acting in this show. I laughed constantly. The writing was fantastic. Uh, the show ran for, I think, six seasons as well, which is incredible to be able to do that in, in this mix of how many shows that were going on in the 90s. But um, I, I love the shows. It definitely was very close to cracking that top five. Murphy Brown just just barely beat him up. I'm there with you, man. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's no coincidence that Wendy Malick was not only on Just Shoot Me, but she was also... Uh, Martin Tupper's ex-wife on Dream On, um, she's amazing, man, and I love I yeah, love that show, man. Hilarious. I was a very big fan of that show. I saw a lot of them too. I don't know why, man. Actually, I do <laughs> know why. I do know. Why. I was with somebody in particular that watched that show a lot, so that's kind of also the reason why that's... I forgot a lot of these. <laughs> but at the same time, that was a great show, man. I'm glad you brought that one up because you know there was there was a there's just such a massive list. Uh, right. Any of you any of you folks that are in the comment section we have about two minutes left something like that if you want to throw up some uh some shows we didn't cover and let us know um we can highlight a couple of those real quick uh tammy thanks for showing up jordana thank you for showing up brandon thank thanks you, for thank showing you. up brian thank you so much for showing up uh everybody who came to hang out who might not have uh decided to sign up with StreamYard, so that could be part of this but if you do want to be part and leave comments go to streamyard.com sign up and just basically connect your Facebook or your YouTube account to it. Boom, it's super easy. And then you can comment in the comment section and have your name pop up and I can we can include you in the show. It's very um, easy to do. Just an email. It's no passwords. Once you're in, it's simple. So just it makes you it allows you to interact with us a little bit during the show if you'd like. And we, we always encourage that if you can. Yeah, and if you don't interact with us now, interact with us in the comments uh, section in uh, at YouTube. And if you have not done so yet please go to the casually serious podcast on youtube and uh and uh subscribe to that if you will we are up to about 27 right now i think which is awesome like says. I, yes yeah i keep promoting it on facebook and we're getting a lot of uh, a lot of good feedback and a lot of people doing uh doing what they can to sign up over there so we've got a couple uh admissions here we've got tammy throwing the drew carey show in there drew carey, that's a good one yeah mm -hmm. absolutely drew carey was good actually tied in i believe with um it's tied in with uh third rock from the sun because the fictional town that they live in is set to be just outside the town where drew carey's town uh, oh, where they were filmed so a little cleveland weird. rocks yeah here we go brandon reddick thank you martin <clears throat> yeah that's a good one yeah that's a very good one absolutely I originally had my background as Martin's living room. I just didn't think a lot of people would uh, recognize it. But uh, uh, anyway, folks, thank you so much for joining us. We are going to take off. Have a great night. Uh, I, again, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Angel, Angel, thank you for married with children. That's mm -hmm. another great one, man. Um, 
You guys take care, and we'll see you next week. Uh, I next believe week. we're going to do something with sketch comedy. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Have a good night. We'll see you soon.